from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube. Covering AWS reInvent 2015. Now your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, welcome back to SiliconANGLE TV's live coverage of Amazon reInvent 2015. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com. Happy to have on this segment, I've got Jennifer Gill, a returning CUBE alum, who is the Director of Global Product Marketing uh, with Zerto. Yes. Jen Jennifer, welcome back. Thank you. And uh, we've got a, a first time guest, uh, Josh Oates, who is the a Systems Engineer with Tenkate. Yes. Josh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so, so Josh, I I'm going to start with you. Can, can you just give us a little bit of background, your role, and uh, tell us a little bit about Ten Tenkate. Uh, well, Tenkata is a um, materials company, so they manufacturing, doing um, several different business units um, uh, with several plants around the uh, uh, world. Actually, I'm in charge of the uh, um, in the U.S. and America's shared service center for IT, and I handle a lot of the infrastructure, servers, and um, you know that kind of stuff. The whole uh, stack of of equipment. So yeah, so that's. That's basically our setup for right now. All right, so, so you say infrastructure. How does cloud fit into that? Uh, well, it's been an initiative to be able to um, uh, get out of the, the data center, traditional data center, and be able to put it up there uh, in the cloud. Amazon has been, obviously, uh, the leader in that, so we started um, tiptoeing toward there uh, with uh, storage first, and then just saw how easy it was going to compute, and then just the, the curve went very steep, and we're just, uh, on, on the plan to move all in eventually. And yeah, so it's uh, it's been a, a big strategy now. All right, so uh, you, can you bring us up to speed as to how, how does Zerto fit into that discussion then? Well, Zerto came in um, as a, obviously, a disaster recovery strategy for us. Uh, we were looking, doing traditional um, backups, file backups, um, backing up the tape, things like that. Um, we had, uh, we were uh, traditionally a uh, acquisition company, acquiring companies. They had their own uh, kind of systems that we're inheriting um, uh, with their own backup strategies kind of stuff. Uh, Zerto uh, came in and was able to uh, standardize the disaster recovery and um, cross-platform, cross-storage, we were able to uh, plug them right in and be able to uh, get a high level of uh, confidence in, in being able to recover our servers. Yeah, so uh, Jennifer, let me bring you into the conversation here. Yeah, I mean, that standardization's a real tough challenge. Uh, yeah. I, I saw you a few weeks ago at VMworld. Uh, Zerto plays across you know, quite a few technologies, so just, I guess, give us the high level on how Zerto fits uh, into that and, and maybe give us a little color of what Josh was talking about. Yeah, so with Zerto, you can replicate from anything to anything, so the hardware is completely irrelevant. It can be whatever you want. So you can use really high-performing storage for your production environment, and then use something a little less expensive on your target site for disaster recovery. With 4.0, that's when we expanded into different types of hypervisors. So you can use VMware and your supercharged storage for your production environment, and then maybe Hyper-V with something a little less expensive for disaster recovery or tests and development. And then even if you want to go even more cost effective, then you could do DR to AWS. And companies like Tenkata that do look to grow through acquisition, because you're going to acquire this entire company and you're going to get their IT infrastructure and you don't know what you're getting. So with Zerto, because we play in the hypervisor in that virtual layer, we are that layer that enables mobility and agility within the infrastructure. You know, first use case is usually disaster recovery, but then companies really open their eyes and say, wow, I can use Zerto for so many things. I can use this for easy migrations. I can start to move applications into the cloud and maybe leave them there. I can do disaster recovery to the cloud. So it's a really powerful tool once people start looking at it. All right, so, yeah, Josh, it, it, it's a try. I've worked with so many companies that have done, you know, those acquisitions, and I mean, that puts typically such huge strain on IT. Right. So, uh, you know, that it's easy now. I can just, you know, go ahead and, you know, buy more companies, and, you know, it, it's a snap for IT. Is that, uh, you know, w w w where does this end, uh, the kind of the Zerto solution? You know, I'm sure there's still lots of other work you need to do uh, from an uh, IT standpoint. There is, yeah. but um, like uh, Jennifer said, it's become a tool that we use in the data center now um, where that we can migrate um, servers easily between um, data centers or now to AWS. Uh, uh, we had a story where we brought on a new uh, company in California. They, um, we wanted to bring their ERP system into our data center. Um, we didn't have a tool. It was either back it up to a physical storage and ship it or across their, um, their internet connection, which was very slow at the time. It was going to take a long time. We were talking downtime. 
Um, we use Zerto. Um, we told them, hey, uh, you want to expect some downtime while we move this. I think um, after we initially seeded the server, um, I think 10 minutes uh, they were down while it was brought up in our data center and then they're back up and, and working. Uh, so, I mean, they, they didn't really recognize anything that uh, had happened. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that's been really interesting to watch at this show over the last couple of years is there's some really big companies, ones that you thought traditionally cloud would probably be a no-no, that are getting up on stage, uh, you know, Capital One this morning said, cloud's more secure than my data center is. Uh, you know, GE said it's a foregone conclusion uh, that we're pushing stuff to the cloud. You know, how, how does your organization fundamentally think about cloud and you know, maybe how, how, how have that been changing uh, you know, recently? Well, we've embraced it. Um, we have a very forward-thinking uh, uh, management team, so they're, they're just very uh, um, open to it. Uh, we're moving uh, other things into the cloud. It's very natural just to start moving servers and uh, data center there. Uh, our biggest uh, concern or worry or challenge might be uh, we're not bringing stuff up um, brand new there. We're, we were looking to shift something over. So now uh, with Zerto as a tool, we're able to uh, replicate the servers over there instead of uh, building anything from scratch. So that's, that's a big uh, selling point. That's also um, uh, a big use case to be able to just test it, right? Does this, does this cloud stuff work? We can move, migrate something over there, test it, run some um, tests in it, see if it's performing like we expect it to perform up in the clouds, as secure as we thought it was, and uh, yeah, it's really helped us with uh, uh, being able to prove yeah, this, the, the cloud stuff works. Yeah, I, I mean, Jennifer, traditionally, you know, backup, you know, disaster recovery, you know, replication, these were, complicated solutions that, yeah. you know, I mean, the traditional storage companies, it was extra licenses, usually get professional services involved. You know, how, how does cloud supercharge this? Yeah, so with a solution like Zerto, you have all of those things, so those different tools that you were kind of coordinating are now in one, and now you're able to go to the cloud and you can just kind of select, all right, I'm looking at this level of processing power and storage, and then order that stack, essentially and it's just available. So turning on IT, it's kind of interesting, you know, when you think about looking at procuring a data center or procuring more hardware that you need for your business, to run your business, it was you know, ordering and waiting, et cetera, or you kind of, now with Amazon, you swipe your credit card and say, okay, I want this, and they say, okay, great, here it is, and you can use this for production or test and development and things like that. In terms of a business, you know, think how much faster now you can react to we have this changing business requirement and we need to run this application, it's huge, we don't have the infrastructure. It's like, oh no, we're, no, we're going to fall behind. Nope, we can just go to the cloud and we can run it there and it'll be up and available and ready to go in hours or days. Yeah, so I, I guess th th there have been some inhibitors to people considering cloud. Yeah. Uh, security was one talked mm -hmm. about for many years. Uh, uncertainty of pricing uh, has been there. Have you seen a maturation in, in this discussion with customers that you're working yeah. with? Absolutely, yeah. it's funny. We had kind of the same opinion as you. Like when we first started coming to reInvent last year, we're like, oh, we'll see who's there. But we were thinking it was companies who couldn't afford anything. They were looking at cloud for cost reasons, and then maybe a few innovators who were really, you know, leading the charge, like Tenkata. And we were surprised to see, you know, the big banks, the pharmaceutical companies, like, oh no, we're absolutely looking at cloud. And maybe not for our mission critical tier one workloads, but for a tier two or tier three workload, why are we going to keep that extra data center around? Why don't we just put it in the cloud? And I think people are getting more and more comfortable with the security. With Zerto, as Josh mentioned, you can do failover, see how it works, make sure it's going to meet your needs, look at the performance, so you have that assurance that, gee, I thought I was going to get something a little less than, and I'm really not. I'm getting the performance that I need and that I look for, and you're able to verify that and print out a report and show that to management and say, hey, you know, we did this failover test with Zerto, and we're able to see that it's running very well. So we might want to consider cloud for other things beyond just maybe those tier three applications. Yeah, uh, Josh, anything you want to add on that? Or? No, that's exactly it. Uh, I mean, we're, we're looking, we're, that's what we're doing. We're consolidating data centers. I mean, we, we grew, um, you know, typically where we uh, had a, one of our locations was our data center, and we're like, okay, something like could happen here, so we go to a, a you know, a colo, the, and um, so now we're running a colo, and then our the other um, location is our backup. Now we can move applications back and forth there. Now, okay, we got to get rid of the backup data center. Um, now Amazon is going to be our backup data center from our colo location. Eventually, you know, the plan is now migrate everything, replicate everything over to Amazon. That's going to be yeah. Uh, so our location. Josh, you know, one of the great benefits of the cloud, of course, is you know, you're paying for what you use. Right. Um, and when, when you looked at kind of backup or replication type solutions, there was awful, uh, 
uh, often, you know, you know, underutilization, as we said, you know, you build a second data center, you do anything like that. Did, did you do any kind of metrics kind of beforehand or measuring after as to, you know, what, what, the, what the cost saving is uh, for, well, we're, you know, we other continues, options? That continues to evolve, uh, but yeah, it, it, um, that is a, the biggest attractive uh, selling point is that you only use what you're, uh, pay what you're using, um, and that's, uh, that's why we're uh, phasing, phasing it in and, and using what we need to now, and then we can test it and turn it off, test it, turn it off, and uh, that's a huge selling point. And that's uh, so, so you bring a good, good point. One of the challenges you usually backup is you don't test it. Right. They say uh, backing up is something, but recovering is everything, yes. right? So <laughs> did you actually test pretty regularly then, it sounds like? Uh, yes, yeah, we, we do test, uh, especially um, into the AWS file quite a bit. Um, uh, Zerto's been great to work with. Um, I think we've um, been working with them very closely, even uh, going into AWS. We've um, they ask for feedback all the time, like what works, what doesn't work, what do you want to see, what features, so we're constantly testing that and we're giving them feedback, they're giving us feedback, we're working closely with them so that it helps out and now um, our replication and uh, recovery into AWS is uh, much, much faster and as we continue um, uh, yeah. on this path. Yeah, Jennifer, you, you must have some, some metrics, you know, compared to, compared to traditional backup, you know, what, what, what's the cost savings on using a, a Zerto solution? Yeah, so there's so many different numbers that we see, it's really hard to look at, you know, what the real savings is. I mean, you know, we have customers who say, uh, who project that, you know, it could be a 60, 70% savings versus, you know, they're looking at, you know, paying a couple thousand dollars a month versus the quarter of a million dollar investment. So it's, it can be very significant, but you know, of course it varies by size, you know, speed, what you're looking for, all those other kinds of things, but you know, we see savings, you know, I don't want to say a percentage, but you know, the customer is looking at a couple thousand dollars a month versus the $250,000 a year on, you know, maintaining and upgrading and all those other things. Yeah. Right, and you're also moving from the, uh, the CapEx to OpEx. Yeah. Um, Model. Yeah, uh, and, and I mean, something we hear over and over is, you know, the, the savings almost is secondary because I can just work so much faster <laughs> yes. uh, with it. It gives me more agility, and rather than, you know, putting all these processes take that could take months or longer, this is something I can do much faster. Yeah, right? abso absolutely, yeah. Uh, I guess, any learnings that, that you've had, Josh, uh, is that you'd want to share with your peers as to kind of your original expectations versus what you've found? As far as moving to the cloud, or uh, moving yeah, to Amazon, exactly. yeah. I mean, I think, um, yeah, I think it's good to test it out, and uh, that Zerto makes it easy for us to say, take your workload, your servers, your application, whatever, um, pick it up, place it in, in the Amazon cloud, and then you can run it right there. And, it, you know, if, especially if cost is, is a problem, you run it for however long you want to run it and test it, turn it off, and, and you, you know exactly yeah, um, the kind of production you're going to get out of it, and then you can, Amazon's really good about telling you exactly how much that, that's going to cost you, uh, you know, per month to have that storage and compute. And uh, you can play around, and now um, with the instance types, you can play around with, all right, if I fell over to a bigger server or a smaller server, I might not need what I have provisioned on uh, prem in the cloud as well. So that's, that's a big up, and, and also cost savings when you uh, go to the uh, OpEx model. Yeah, Jennifer, uh can you share with us you know, what, what kind of conversations are you having in, in the booth area around the show? Uh, you know, what, what are bringing you know, end users to come, come talk to you? But. Yeah, so, well, two key use cases. So the first, disaster recovery, and that's kind of where um, Josh and Tancata started. So looking at, wow, I can run this in a cloud environment, and I, when I replicate the data, I'm only using S3 storage. I'm not using any compute resources other than to run the cloud appliance that's going to manage your recovery when you do fail over. So in terms of you know, what I'm using, wow, I'm only paying for the storage and then I cannot have to pay for the processing power until I fail over, that's very attractive. And then the other is customers like, you know what, we're getting out of the data center business and we're looking for something that can move applications from on-prem into AWS. And we also have migrations licensing and as Josh mentioned, moving a 300 gigabyte ERP application from California to Georgia with 10 minutes of downtime you know, you'll see similar results with that in AWS. So if you're looking to kind of move into the cloud, and because Zerto does protect at the virtual protection group layer, that's a group of VMs that make up an application. So it's not like an all or nothing, like you're going to get with, you know, if you were used to trying, I don't know how it would work, but if you're trying to use storage replication to get something into the cloud, it's not an all or nothing. You can select, I want this workload, we're going to move into the cloud, and we're going to see how it goes. And you can start with just that one workload. So migrations and then the disaster recovery, just because the cost savings is so significant. 
Yeah, and Josh, I just want to give you the final word. You know, what what, what do you get from coming to a show like reInvent? Uh, what would you share with your peers as kind of the, the, the value in uh, opportunities at a show like this? Yeah, in addition to you know finding out about uh, more of the AWS services and, and things that they're doing, um, uh, just learning from peers and finding out how they're using um, AWS and um, and applications like Zerto and just um, how it's uh, working in their organization, and uh, you can get a lot of uh, tricks and tips uh, uh, with that. All right. Well, Josh Oates, uh, Jennifer Gill, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back with lots more coverage here from AWS reInvent 2015. Thank you for watching.